Hey guys, welcome to my channel and if you're new to this channel, my name is Alex. I'm glad you're watching this and today I want to do a sort of different video that I usually do because today is a special month, special day for me. It marks one year of full-time missions. Last year in July, I flew out from Germany and landed here in Tanzania and it's been an amazing year. And I thought I'm going to share with you some of those things that uh, really were valuable to me during this year. But before I do that, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys who are watching this. Um, if you have been watching several videos or just one, I just wanted to uh, express my gratitude and say thank you for supporting me, being part of this journey. And we have close to 300 uh, subscribers now. We have over 10,000 views and over 300, um, 300 hours of watching. So thank you so much for tuning in, supporting me and making this possible. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to share a few things that I found really valuable to me as a missionary overseas. And I don't know who is watching this right now. Maybe you are a missionary yourself and you're on the field. And I hope that you find this um, helpful to you as well. But maybe you have also interest in doing missions full time. And I'm sure that as you watch this video, it will help you to get ready and prepared for what is coming next for you. But yeah, I have a few things and I just want to start with the first that has been really important to me. And I think that's important, uh, not just on the missions field, but wherever you go. And it is to have a team. I'm a missionary here with Overland Missions and uh, we have a team all over the world. But right now I'm pioneering a new area here in Tanzania. And two of my team members, they're not able to be physically with me right now. But uh, what I found that God has always been faithful with team. I had uh, team members from different places coming and joining me for a season and serving with me. Or I had some people just uh, from the area where I serve joining me for a season for a few days, for a few, few weeks and really pioneering and being part of what God is doing in my life and through our team. And of course, I had my team who are in the States uh, supporting me, praying for me. I had a team in Germany, my financial partners who have been making it possible for me to be here physically, but also, of course, they're praying for me. So it's been really important to me to have a team and just knowing that I'm not going by myself. And honestly, I don't have what it takes to actually do the work. <laughs> I can do only one part and there's so much more that needs to be done. So it's so important to have people with you. And I found it really valuable to, to have those people with me. And the next point that I want to share is what I call being out of control. And what I mean by that is that I want to give control to the Holy Spirit. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit instead of making my plans God plans, so to say. And I found it very valuable and really stretching this year, uh, taking, uh, giving away control and allowing the Holy Spirit really to lead me. And I already shared that story uh, in one of my videos, but... I remember when we first went to Mwanza, the place that we are pioneering, and I didn't really know, knew what to do and where to go. But I remember the Holy Spirit telling me, hey, Alex, if I'm sending you, you have to trust that I'm going to lead you as well. And it was scary because, you know, it, it, you, you want to control things and you want to control the outcome. But I remember just having this peace and knowing, okay, it's, it's not about me this time. And if I really believe that God is sending me, I have to also to believe that he's going to lead me to the end. And that's what he did. Eventually, he opened up the a whole island group for us in Lake Victoria. And right now we're ministering there and seeing hundreds of people being touched by the Holy Spirit and being saved. And I know that most of us, we desire great results when we do something. And I found... In this last year that as I'm faithful to what God has given me, he actually creates God results, what I call. I believe that it's something that I would not be able to accomplish by myself or by my ability. 
And I remember when we went to the Maasai village, me and my friend Tapio, we have been spending weeks preparing and reaching out to the leaders of the village. And then close to our actual expedition, when the team arrived, they told us that they no longer want us to be with us, uh, with them. And you can imagine that this moment was really a crushing moment. And I remember feeling like giving up. I, I thought to myself, I don't even want to be among these people anymore. I don't want to serve them anymore. And something in me said, hey, Alex, um, if God has sent you here, uh, he wants to accomplish something. And you have to be faithful to just stick to the plan, uh, stick to what God has given you and expect him actually to bring the results. And I remember we um, decided as a team that we want to continue. And just a few days later, we had a huge meeting with the leaders. And in the end of the meeting, they actually allowed us to continue with the ministry that we were planning to do. And we saw hundreds of people being saved as a result in the end of the week. So I see that as I give myself to God and as I'm faithful in the midst of opposition, in the midst of persecution, then God uh, can make something beautiful out of it. And that's something that I saw in this year, not only once, but many times. And something that I've been learning to see from a fresh perspective is the pace of ministry. I remember one of my friends and I we were sitting in the car and just chatting about ministry. And he said something that really impacted me in the moment. He said, Alex, there is a season or a time of ministry that is outward. It means, you know, you are going out, you are meeting people, you are preaching, and it seems like there's a lot of results, a lot of fruit that is seen. But there's also times and seasons of ministry that are inward ministry. That's what he called it. And it's a ministry that is happening inside of you. And maybe people don't see the fruits, they don't see the results. And it seems like, you know, you're not moving forward. You're spending time home, you know, and maybe you're reading a lot and, you know, just things that are not really seen for people and for yourself. And this is the time where things are really happening inside of you and where you strategize, where, you know, the Holy Spirit is importing things into your spirit, where you pray, you know, you intercede and where God is getting ready to release you into this different season that he has for you. Uh, something like uh, different seasons if you're coming from a country where you have different seasons and for in Germany in in the winter things seems like they are gray and it seems like uh, the trees they they don't produce fruit but when the sp spring comes and then the summer we see that the the trees are starting to bloom again and those leaves are coming out and you start to see what it has been inside, but it was hidden. And this is something very really valuable to me, especially this last year, to see that, hey, we had moments that were exciting, that were fast, but there were also moments that were slow. And to appreciate those moments as well, that both uh, the fast pace and the slow pace is so important for you and for your health, and just uh, to be really effective in the ministry that God has for you. Well, this one is a really cool revelation that I feel like I got in the whole year ministering here in Tanzania. And me as a person, I really enjoy having a home. I love just having my space. I, I love just coming home and knowing this is my place and I can just be here uh, myself. I can do whatever I like to do. I don't have to really pay attention too much to anyone else. And of course, you know, when you are coming back to a place that is familiar to you, you don't have to learn how to live in a new place. And this is something that I really felt like I was missing a lot of times. I've been traveling a lot. I've been to many places. Sometimes it's been one week in one place. Sometimes it's been a couple of months. But um, I came to a place... Uh, many times actually where I thought, God, I just, I just want to feel home, you know? And I have this um, time that I spend with God every morning. 
and also in the evening. But I realized that every time that I come into this uh, place where I have fellowship with God in His presence, that this sense of home comes into my heart. It's kind of weird to describe, but uh, I was longing to these moments, especially when I was traveling a lot. I was longing to this to this morning devotionals that I had just to feel a sense of home and sense of, sense of familiarity. And this is something that I realized that God has given me, really, that wherever I go, as long as I'm in the presence of God, I'm home. And I think it's so simple. It's, uh, it's not a, like a deep revelation, but it's been such a refreshing revelation to me um, not to look forward to a place or a place of habitation, but actually really to press in into the presence of God and searching for Him, looking for Him wherever I go, that I will not just be there to minister, but actually that I will be abiding in the presence of God. The last point that I want to share is been something that you may relate to if you are someone who loves to dream and has a lot of dreams, uh, someone who has vision or different goals that you're pursuing. I myself, I, I have dreams. I would say I'm a dreamer and I would say I have vision, especially for what we want to do here as a team. But I realized that um, being a person of vision or having dreams, you, um, as, at least I, I tend to live in the future. I, I dream about the end result. But I just realized that I kind of miss out on something that is in today. And actually, I believe that every day has its value. That we can, um, tr we can miss it if we are not really attentive to what is happening around you. And I just realized that I'm not always succeeding at it, but when I succeed, I realize that the reward that I get from being present in the day, being present with your surrounding, being present with the people who are with you, it's, it gives you so much life and it gives so much more to the journey that you're on. And I believe actually that the full potential of your dream or the vision that you have is in today and actually counting every day and the journey that you're on. I believe if you are not really careful, you may miss out on the full potential that actually the dream or the vision has for you. So guys, I really want to encourage you to yeah, press in into what God has for you. And if you're just starting your journey as a missionary, I hope these points have been helpful to you and the lessons that I've been learning. And if you're a missionary, I hope you know that you are succeeding and you are winning in what God has for you. I believe that what we are called to do, each and every one, it doesn't matter if you are a full-time missionary or if you are doing a full-time job somewhere where you live, but I believe that what God is calling you to do, it's such an amazing journey that God is calling you onto. And I pray that you will enjoy it, but um, more than that, I, I pray that you will accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. So guys, uh, thanks so much for watching this. And if you like this video, please uh, leave a like. And if you want to stick together with me and my journey, then subscribe to the channel and share with other people as well. See you next time.